Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things tech and finance. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about question and answering models. So the high level overview on what question answering models are is actually really simple. You have a question, you're typing in your question, you press enter or you submit your question, and then hopefully the answer that comes out is what you're looking for. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into the nuances of QA modeling. So when we are talking about QA modeling, uh, there are two different domains, and these are like huge categories, and within each of these categories, there's these subcategories known as a question type. However, the open domain system, you can think of this as for broad questions. Uh, you're typically like, you know, asking questions to Siri or, or, you know, if you're looking for an answer, it can be on Wikipedia. So think like really broad, not really... Uh, tailored for a specific industry. It's just like, okay, that's uh, like trivia pursuit. Closed domain system, you can think of this as more tailored text for a specific industry. And in the real world, typically we will be using closed domain systems just because we're just trying to narrow down on that specific uh, question that we really want answered, like you know, within the health industry or finance industry, or even the law industry. So the only thing that's like really different is that it's just trained on a more tailored vocabulary that is suited for that specific industry. That's really all that is. And then once you nail down what type of domain system that you have going on, then you wanna ask yourself what type of question type that your specific QA model will be providing. So it could be open-ended, it could be yes or no, it could be inference style questions. It really just depends on what type of output you're looking for. So if you're doing like in your taxes for for instance, and using TurboTax, um, you know, it could be like more of like a recommendation system, but it could be like, you know, like a yes, no styled, or here's a link for you to click. Tough along on those lines, but you know, the QA modeling can be used for many of those types of systems. Really just depends on your specific use case. Now, there are three, I guess, like large or major categories of types of QA models uh, that are all pretty much how to like, have those systems, but the way that it generates its answers are a little bit different. So in this video, we'll just be focusing on the extractive question answering model. And uh, you can think of this as you're providing context, so like a paragraph, uh, you're asking a question to that paragraph, and you're assuming that the answer exists inside that paragraph of context. So that's what essentially extractive question answering is in a nutshell. Uh, of course, there's some nuances happening in the back end, but in a nutshell, that is what it is. Now we have the open generative question answering. So you can think of this as like GPT-2. Um, so this is essentially like generating an answer and the answer does not literally have to be in a text. So that's like the only thing that's a little bit different. And then we have the closed generative question answering model. And it's basically like, it's like a closed system where you don't need to provide any context because it already has all so many documents that it is trained on. And if you ask a question to it, hopefully it will have that answer. Uh, so that's pretty much what those three high level overviews on the, uh, the question answering models are. Sweet. So if you want some additional information on what question answering models are, I attach a few resources with those links. You can go ahead and dive a little bit deeper. I have one for Hugging Face, another one for all the really popular um, out of the box models you can go ahead and use and even fine tune. Really, really neat. There's a basically like a list of other question answering models you can use. You can even check out how to pre-train and fine tune your very own BERT model using a very specific format. And it just goes through all the specific formats that you, you just need to have when you're gonna be going through this process. Nonetheless, via the, uh, the extractive QA modeling that we'll be doing right now, uh, I'll be doing just that. So before we actually go to the implementation phase, I do highly recommend that you check out this BERT video linked here, uh, partly because question answering model is literally based off of a BERT model architecture. The only thing that's different is that it has the output layer where that output layer is a linear layer and each of those, well, each of the nodes within the linear layer represents a specific word. You can think of it as a word and wherever the prediction is, it's going to be predicting a specific word output. So that's basically what's happening there. Uh, so this very specific QA model we'll be using is something called Roberta. It's basically like a new and improved version of BERT. Uh, but as all it does is like it removes the NSP objective, which is not predicting the next sentence during its training phase anymore. It's also training on 
larger batch sizes, longer sequences, and is dynamically changing that masking pattern where it's trying to predict which of the words within the sentence are actually the word itself. So that's where the masking part is being done. And it's really, really neat. Uh, so yeah, nonetheless, let's go ahead and go to Google Colab, which is right here. Uh, I'm also made sure to link this inside of the uh, GitHub notebook that I attach in the description down below. So before you begin, make sure you go to over here, you go to RAM, make sure you change the run type, make sure you're on a GPU uh, because we are using a very, very intensive type of a model and the run times are quite insane. And I'll show you a representation of that very soon. So let's go ahead, make sure you install uh, pip install transformers, very important library for us to essentially utilize, um, you know, question answering models or any NLP model for that matter, or some other very popular neural network architecture. Uh, so nonetheless, this is a real quick example, literally came from hugging face. Uh, but this is a real quick example on how to utilize a box right out. I mean, how to utilize a model right out of the box. So we imported, imported our important packages. We have our model name where our model is Roberta base squad two. Uh, and this is where the model is located. It's, uh, we're just using the question answering here, uh, but it's literally from hugging face and we are importing that, um, using this pipeline function we have over here. So the deep set Roberta base squad two, uh, that is the model that we will be extracting from the hugging face API. And we are specifying we want the question answering model from this specific model here, uh, partly because there are different, um, usually different types of models that are based off of the same model architecture, just like hot swapping uh, output layers. Um, we are going to be, yep, that's the model name. And then a tokenizer, we assign that with the name as well. Since there's like a little directory within this repository, if we go to files and versions, this is where all the information is located. So once you, you know, associate your model names with your NLP pipeline, this is where the extractive question answering model will be done. So notice that we have a question and we provide a specific context and we are assuming that the answer exists within this context. And so this is essentially the highlights of the extractive uh, QA process. So we just plug in the QA input question and context into our NLP pipeline, and we are expecting uh, an output, which we will see right here, the results. And so we see the answer gives freedom to the user. So why is the model of conversion important? Gives freedom to the user, gives freedom to the user. So it's literally extracted from that context. And that is what QA is doing. It provides us an F1 score. And note that the F1 score is defined as here, basically like the individual words, uh, the predicted individual words and the true words, and it's plugged into the F1 scoring algorithm. And notice that we have here, we have an index of start. And basically right here, it starts at 59. And it just, that's where, that's the beginning of the, of the answer. So I assume between here and here is between 59 and 84. Uh, that is the span. So that's pretty much how you use a Roberta QA model right out of the box. So if you want to go ahead and start fine tuning the like little model with, you know, your own data sets, uh, well, look no further. If you're curious as to what the model looks like for Roberta, uh, you could just print out the model architecture defined right here, model, and it provides you the overall architecture on what that is. Uh, a lot of layers and a lot of, a lot of great stuff here, but essentially it's basically like a BERT model. Uh, BERT stacks on BERT, stacks on BERT. <laughs> so that's basically what that is. And as we can see, we have our last linear layer here. So let's go ahead and look into the fine tuning phase. So definitely recommend a GPU. That's why we have Google Colab. Uh, and otherwise it'll be like incredibly slow. So there are two ways of doing this. And the first way is via the command line route. And if we essentially just copy and paste this link to see what this run squad Python is, it's essentially a link to a specific branch that has the, like basically all the training steps within this entire repository. Uh, and you would have to go ahead and define some of the arguments 
uh, that are raised in here. And I do recommend that if you want to go via the command line route, you just go ahead and go to this link and there's like an entire like instructional set on what to do. So if you don't like using the command line that much, well, you came to the right video. So let's go ahead and look at the using popular library section. First things first, you want to go ahead and make sure you have a really good data set. So we're going to be installing the data sets um, library where we want the squad data set, just version one. And the squad data set can be found here. And the squad data set, which I opened up a new tab and just loaded over here, is essentially a really, really high quality data set that was developed at Stanford, fun fact. And there are, this is like heavily, highly, highly annotated where the answer starts and where text is supposed to be the answer to that given context. And they're given a specific document title name and then the ID is just the hash of the context. And there's 50,000 of these. So it's extremely, extremely useful uh, in terms of the training and you know fine tuning phase, I should say, um, where it has you know its specific labeling. Okay, our data set has been loaded. Let's move myself back up here. And once that has been loaded, let's go ahead and check out what the data set is. And you can already see some of these outputs, but we have 87,000 rows. Oh, so it's 100,000 or so. Yeah, close to 100,000 uh, records that we'll be dealing with. So we have 87,000 rows for the training set and the validation set is close to 10,000. So just running this, we can go ahead and check out what one of these records are and as we see this looks very familiar um, basically we're given the index start of where our our answer lies in our given context here we have a question and we have the title basically where that title is like what document it came from and so this over here is just a really large cleaning function you can go ahead and check that out but pretty much courtesy of hugging face on how to convert all of these specific records we have in our squad data set so that it's readable for the actual BERT model. And so this is what this entire thing is doing over here. Okay, great. That only took about a minute for us to pre-process our entire data set. And now the next parts we want to go ahead and do is to load in this package, the default data collator. Uh, once we have that, let's go ahead and run this, the, uh, the same exact thing where we're just, we're just extracting our given model. Uh, from the model name and remember the model name itself is from the deep set Roberta base 2 and this is how you fine-tune your given model and At the end uh, this will be outputting into a specific folder uh, under results, I believe And we can just wait a little bit uh, But now it's training and it's taking close to three hours or so with a GPU if, and my GPU is probably not that great however if we were to run this on CPU, which I did, fun fact, all the way down here, um, it would have taken me um, that number. So 65 hours to run, whereas a GPU on Google Colab would have taken me about three hours. Now, if you are curious about how to train your QA model from scratch, otherwise known as a pre-training phase, I highly recommend you check out this guide over here on how to pre-train your very own model. And what this section is doing, the pre-training phase, is that it's training the model to understand the context, the syntax, the language, the nuances of the language that is being fed in the data. And this is a self-supervised approach where you don't need label data at all. You just give it like huge amounts of text, just corpuses upon corpuses of data uh, for it to just you know understand the nuances because it's using a masked uh, approach. Uh, and then the fine tuning phase, that's where the labeling starts to occur. So as we see here, uh, we notice that the results are being populated and we have different checkpoints. And these are the different uh, initializations of each one of these checkpointed models. And you can literally just go ahead and download each one of these checkpoints to do whatever you need to do. And the final checkpoint is going to be your final model.